Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV in the new edition of our online interview series. And we want to talk now to Fahad Abbasov of Millennial Potash because the company just brought out their first resource estimate. Fahad, welcome and good day. How are you? Hi, Jochen. Good, good. How are you doing, my friend? I'm fine. Thank you very much. All good. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm a shareholder of your company. I have to disclose that also up front, please. And um, yeah, you just brought out your first mineral resource estimate for your Banjo uh, Podash project. And uh, to my understanding, that looks really nice, isn't it? Yeah, and the numbers are impressive, uh, considering two things. We've done it in a, in a very short period of time. As you remember, we started with this company only in March uh, last year. Since then, we've mobilized, we raised some capital, we built the camp, we started drilling. And uh, the entire resource, which is between indicated and measured, uh, sorry, indicated and inferred, is almost over 1.7 billion tons at 16% KCL, is based on just two drill holes. Mm -hmm. And on a very, very small area of our 1,200 square kilometer project. So... You can imagine our excitement when we saw the numbers because if we can produce this type of a large resource estimate based on two drill holes, mm -hmm. then imagine the potential, the upside potential, we can actually do more work. Yeah, okay. So maybe stupid question, but to my understanding, how can you do that with only two drill holes? I mean, we are used to like in gold, silver or copper, you you hear like, uh, oh, we have drilled 300,000 meters and then we have this and that. But uh, you have done two drill holes, but you had probably already some historic stuff also, right? Absolutely, Jochen. So two things. First, you're absolutely right. We had some historical data uh, from 2017 and 2018. Of course, we used some of that as well, and we drilled ourselves. But also, remember, the potash uh, deposits are quite different from, let's say, precious metals or copper, uh, etc., whereas they're very uniform, very continuous. So you don't need a, a lot of drill holes. So for, for example, the area that we're thinking about in the northern part will probably sink another two drill holes. So altogether four, maybe five drill holes will give us a very large resource. Mm -hmm. um, and also we noticed, uh, and you saw that from our previous uh, news release from the drill hole uh, results, that the uh, thickness of the potash deposit here is tremendous. Mm -hmm. You know, in the north, which is the thinnest part, we're still looking at 70 to 80 meters of thickness, which is amazing. Um, you know, and in the south, we think it's going to go over 150 meters. Um, so mm -hmm. that is why we could actually delineate a very strong resource estimate based on just two drill holes. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Um, so the the next, um, let's say, work would be then that you look more northern or you look more th southern. What where, where do you see the most area of interest? I would call it. Yeah, so the easiest thing for us at this point you know, would be to continue in the north because we have all the infrastructure there, the, uh, the, the mm -hmm. camp itself is there, of course. So we can continue with two uh, more drill holes in the north and increase within substantially what we just reported yesterday. And then, of course, uh, as soon as that is done, we're going to go into bankable feasibility study. So this quarter, we're going to do a preliminary economic uh, assessment that will come out in February or March. Well, um, and then after we drill, um, you know, further in the north, then we'll go into the feasibility set because we believe you know, at that time we'll have more than enough material, especially measured and indicated uh, uh -huh. categories to go ahead with the feasibility study. The well, south I will be the next step. South will yeah. be probably later this year. Uh -huh. Okay, so in, in, in terms of, let's say, production, in terms of, uh, yeah, um, let's say, hypothetical, let's, let's, let's create something like a model. With the resource you have today, what could something like this mean? Maybe the resource will, will be 50% higher after all your drilling. Uh, what would that mean for a possible production? So, look, Jochen, what we want to do is two things. What we have now is enough to do a PEA. And with further drilling, we'll do two things. One, of course, increase the, the total uh, resource size, but mm -hmm. also move a lot of this into measured and indicated category, mm -hmm. um, increasing the confidence and the resource. And that will allow us to go into feasibility study with enough reserves to do a full bank of feasibility study. And in terms of the, um, you know, the strategic intent here is to really show and not only what we can do with this project, meaning that we can start with 400, 500,000 tons, maybe a million tons mm -hmm. a year, but we want to show to potential uh, strategic that they can do a much larger production scale here. In other words, they can do beyond million tons a year mm -hmm. of, uh, of production. 
Uh, and that way, you know, they, they, they will be interested in much larger scale. And that's what we've done in the past, Johan. you know, mm -hmm. remember with, with Potash One and Saskatchewan, we're planning 1 million tons. Uh, but Cadmium Salts, once they had bought the company, they actually went straight for 2 million ton a year operation. And that was the intention of ICL when they bought our Atlanta Potash as well. We're planning 1 million, they were planning much larger scale too. So here we want us to show... Uh, you know, the much larger scale, although what we found now and what we're going to find in the next uh, few months will be more than enough for our purposes, uh, meaning that for, for the production scale that we're contemplating. We're not uh, envisioning a very large uh, scale operation to start with. We're going to probably start with 400,000, maybe 500,000 tons. Um, that will keep our CapEx low, which will be more realistic for a small company like ours. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. But would that uh, maybe also mean um, that uh, that you would partner with a larger company, maybe a company out of Kabul? So look, I mean, that's a very good question. We in the past we've always brought in a strategic investor. Um, mm -hmm. You remember with Millennial Lithium, we brought in a very large investor from yeah. China. It was a large solar power company, obviously interested in lithium. With Alana Potash, uh, International Finance Corporation out of Washington, D.C., was a large investor in the company. Mm -hmm. And then we brought in Liberty Mutual Insurance Group out of Boston, um, who also invested heavily in Alana Potash. Here, uh, we're, we're contemplating uh, this similar model, a similar strategy. So we've already been engaged with some um, by some uh, large off-takers and distributors of fertilizers, specifically potash. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, the last few weeks, uh, we've also been approached by uh, large potash producers from different parts of the world, uh, both from the West and Asia. Um, so, uh, and their interest, of course, is, you know, they have a strategic angle. They're not just financial investors. So they they want to take either product or potentially come in and help us build this project or, or maybe M&A down the road. Mm -hmm. So that is always part of our strategy, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what we're doing. And that's why we've developed this project so far and continue developing in a record time. Think about it this way. How many companies, uh, junior companies, you know, that start in March and by January the next year, you have a uh, 43 101 uh, resource system. That's incredible. Not, not, not one that I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is how we operate, and that's what we and. That is important because uh, it, that also, you know, facilitates and, of course, accelerates, you know, the, the, our interaction with potential uh, strategic investors because they want to see the resource, even, in, even though it's a very initial uh, size, but they can still see the potential. But also they want to see a preliminary economic assessment. They want to see the economics. Mm, absolutely. And I'm hoping to have this conversation with you in a month or two to discuss that as well. I would love to, definitely. How is it uh, today in Kabul itself? Because there there were some, let's say, unrest last year, but I think this all calmed down and everything is okay, right? Absolutely. Yeah, but the, there was a change of, in government. Mm -hmm. And um, although a lot of people got worried about it, etc., but frankly, we saw no impact on us on the ground at all. Uh, but obviously, you know, the perception of risk uh, has deteriorated. So mm -hmm. since then, we've had very important meetings with key government officials. Uh, we've met with ministers of mines, of environment, of economy. Most importantly, I met with, uh, with the new president, His Excellency, uh, last December. That was a very important meeting. It was a long meeting with all the key ministers present. And we discussed the project and all the details around the project, including infrastructure buildup and so forth. And I was absolutely surprised, pleasantly surprised to see that type of support coming from the top um, of the government, meaning not only do they support the project, they really want us to advance it. Um, so we discussed the details of how they're going to help us with the port development. They are working on funding uh, port development in this uh, part of the country. And basically, they asked me, why will it take two years to put this in production? <laughs> they would like to see this in production as much as possible. Yeah. Of course, I explained how the, the whole process works. But yeah, we see uh, not only the government of political support, you know, and we've also seen, and I think you referred to it uh, uh, yeah, or earlier in your question, also from potential uh, financial investors in the country, in Gabon. Uh, there's an investment agency in the country. It's a government investment agency. They've already directed a few interested parties, mm -hmm. interested financial investors to the company. We've, we've been talking with these uh, groups as well. There are also some funds and banks uh, in Gabon itself that are interested in this project. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the fact that in the last few weeks, unsolicited, 
you know, a few large potash uh, players have approached us is a very good indication. Fantastic. Hey, that sounds like a great game plan. And uh, I know you, you always have the success and you make it. That's for sure. Uh, that's why I'm a shareholder. Very simple because I trust you fully. <laughs> and you. I, think, I think you guys do a great job. So thank you very much uh, for that update. And as you said, we talk in some weeks when you have the PEA out and discuss that then. All the best, Farhat. Thanks Thank you. Care. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye -bye. you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Farhat Abbasov of Millennial Potash. And yeah, You heard it. Things are moving the right way, like with Millennium Lithium. You remember the former company of Fahad, which was sold for a beautiful 470 million Canadian dollars. And uh, I think uh, he is again on the same way, same paths. Uh, super interesting project in Gabon, the Banjo project. Now the first resource is out. Fantastic estimate. And in several weeks, we will see the PEA. And I'm pretty sh uh, sure that those will be also nice numbers and they can really move on. And the interest is already there. So maybe it's like with Britney Spears in some months. Oops, I did it again. So it could be that somebody will buy the company or at least we will see a much, much higher share price. So make sure you own some millennial potash as I do for sure. And uh, wish you all the best. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.